Lately, I've had a lot of people saying, Diego, you should just chop and drop all of your compost. And while that's a great idea in theory, I'm not sure it's such a great idea on a small scale. Let's take a deeper look at that in this video. Right up front, I wanna say that this is a discussion starter video. The whole idea behind this video is to get you thinking. I wanna hear your comments, your thoughts on what I've been thinking when it comes to chop and drop in the garden. Also, the TLDR version of this video is, it's a long video. So if you think it's too long, go watch a video on Instagram or TikTok. This probably isn't the video for you, but it's a long one. You've been warned in advance. If you like long videos, then enjoy this one. And again, leave your comments below, but be nice about them and give me some actual thoughts. Don't just say I agree or I disagree. Let me know why you agree or why you disagree. Chop and drop is one of those simple concepts that people talk about in permaculture all the time. I think people really gravitate towards it because it's easy and it sounds like with a little work, you can accomplish a lot in terms of soil building, and maybe you can. Chop and drop at its basics is just what it sounds like. You have a plant growing, you chop it, you let it drop, and it sits wherever it lays for the rest of eternity in the form of biomass or soil. The great thing about chop and drop is you can do it year over year over year and gradually build up soils. I think in a forest setting that this works great. In an orchard type setting, it works great. I mean, this is what forests do. Imagine that thousand year old oak tree that's depositing leaf litter year after year after year. Nature is doing the chopping when the leaves fall. They drop to the ground, they build up, and they build this thick mat of nice, super rich soil for that tree to grow in into the future. Given that it's easy and given that it builds soil, should we be doing that on the small scale in the garden? I'm not so sure. I've thought a lot about this and I don't think chop and drop is really a great strategy to use in the garden. I could be totally wrong on this. Let me know if you think I am in the comments below or where you think I might be missing things. This is really me questioning some ideas around chop and drop. And I've combined what I've read in studies and books, what I've heard speakers talk about, and just my own experiences with chop and drop, with composting, to kind of put this all together. So this is an exploration on the idea of chop and drop, is it worth it? Let's jump right into it. I wanna make it clear right up front that I'm comparing two things in this video, chop and drop and composting to get rid of a previous crop or a cover crop. We're not counting methods like turning it in or tilling it in. Yes, that's a great method if you're into tillage to get biomass into the soil, but it's not part of this comparison. We're only doing an A to B comparison, chop and drop versus composting. By chop and drop, it's just what I said. There would be a green manure or a cover crop growing. We would simply chop it off its surface, let it drop, and it would just lay on the surface. By composting, what I mean here is we would grow our cover crop or our green manure or our just previous crop, say that's tomatoes. We would cut it off its surface, leaving the roots in the ground, and then we would take the tops down to a pile here and compost them. So two different methods. One keeps that organic matter in place 100% of the time on soil surface, and one where the organic matter is moved from the original place to a second place to compost, and then maybe it goes back to that bed in the form of finished compost, but maybe it goes somewhere else. Let's look at the mechanics of each one in terms of what's actually happening. If you have a cover crop here, and it's two feet tall, you cut it off right at soil surface, because that's what we would want. Now that could be with a scythe, it could be by just a hand sickle, it could be you mow it down, you could flail mow it, you could string trim it, you could crimp it, you could just trample it. But some way you're taking all this biomass and you're getting it to go from a vertical position into a horizontal position on the surface like this. And the idea here is you're knocking it down to kill it to terminate the crop. 
So we're not looking for any sort of regrowth in this scenario. We're looking to terminate the crop. So we need to snap the stem. We need to break it. We need to crimp it. We need to tear it in order to stop this plant from growing. When you do that, what you end up with is a layer of biomass on the soil surface. And it's going to be a relatively thin layer of biomass compared to the height of a compost pile. I mean, even if you have six foot tall cover crops and you trample them down, by the time they lay on each other and all the air space eventually comes out, you're not going to be left with a very thick layer. You're really just going to have the stalks because a lot of the leaves are going to lose moisture and shrivel up pretty quickly. And a bunch of stalks piled up on each other aren't going to be more than an inch high. Like it's just, you're not going to build a bunch of height across the soil surface. Now you may think when you chop down all this biomass that you'll get this nice uniform mat across the soil surface and you might, but I'm willing to bet that if you stood here and you look down at the soil after a chop and drop, you're going to walk across and you're going to see soil amongst all the plant material because it's not going to create a perfect mat. It's not like you're tarping the bed with biomass. You're more th throwing loose biomass down, which is inherently going to leave some soil exposed. That's fine. This chopping and dropping then with this thin layer of biomass really mimics what nature does. Imagine now this is a herd of buffalo coming through. This is how the Great Plains were built knock it over, the next plant grows up through, knock that over, the next one goes up through, the animals are pooping, they're recycling nutrients onto the soil, the soil is building. In the nature example, it's great, and that's again why I think people love chop and drop. This is how nature evolves, but nature evolves very slowly. You're talking about building inches of soil over tens of thousands of years, over very, very long periods. For gardeners, if you have very poor soil, adding a millimeter of topsoil a year or a quarter inch even of topsoil a year isn't really the best thing. It's going to take a long time to get productive soils. So the chop and drop approach, while I think it's effective, it's a very slow, slow moving approach. Because even when this biomass that sits on the surface, if it's an inch high, when it breaks down, you're going to be left with a very, very thin layer of biomass left on the soil surface. Why is that? Well, a lot of this biomass, it looks big when you first chop it, but a lot of it ends up going in the air because what's in a lot of that biomass? It's just straight water. So if you take a plant and you just chop it, hang it upside down, let it dry out, that plant's going to be a lot smaller in a dried state than it would be in a hydrated state. So this is going to collapse down and be a lot less mulch on the soil surface than you would expect it would be when you first chop it. But in addition to water vapor going up into the air, you're also going to get a lot of gases that are produced when this biomass breaks down. CO2, uh, carbon monoxide, methane, the byproducts of digestion of this organic matter will produce gases. So that leaves you with this very thin layer of, quote, compost on the soil surface. It's what, whatever's left from this. But are you even getting composting happening here? If you think about what's happening in a compost pile, let's look at that. This we would chop off its soil surface. We would take this organic matter down here and we would put it in this pile. Now it's going to be a big pile that ends up as a small pile. We know that just from experience. Yes, we're going to get organic matter or uh, water vapor going up into the air. We're going to get gases going up into the air, which is why this pile gets smaller. You also lose airspace just like you would over here. The difference being is if our bed unit is this big, well, we've concentrated over here, or we've spread out all that biomass over a whole bed unit, where if we harvested all this compost and we put all that compost in a pile on our bed, we've really taken a bed and we've concentrated all that biomass on a small section. 
Maybe it's only a 10th, maybe it's a 20th, maybe it's a 30th of the bed that now has all that biomass on it. Versus again, spreading it out over the entire surface. So when we concentrate it, we end up with a big pile. Well, what usually happens in a big pile? You get composting processes engaged. Bacteria are hyper involved in the breakdown. This gets hot and it really starts to cook at the core and you start to get soil or what we would call true compost in the center. But what do you notice about a compost pile? Say you never turned that and it wasn't covered and you didn't water it. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, the core is really gonna break down. It's gonna look eventually like compost where the outer layer is gonna be the slowest. So you kind of have fast breakdown to slowest. And a lot of times on the outside of a compost pile, the stuff on the outside looks like when it went in to the compost pile in the first place. It's just dried out, it's browned out. What's happening here? This isn't a thick layer. You don't have this critical mass for bacteria to colonize. You don't have this critical mass to hold heat. You don't have this critical mass to hold moisture. So are a lot of these plants just desiccating and drying out? Yes, the inherent minerals that make up the plant. So if you just took a plant and you just dried it out and then ground it into a powder and put that on the soil surface, you are mineralizing the soil or remineralizing the soil with this plant material when it goes back to the soil. But are you adding compost? Are you building humus in the soil? I'm not so sure. Now you may argue, well, okay, well, we're getting worms that come up and they eat a little bit of this and then they go back down. Sure, maybe, if it's thick enough again. Because I think a lot of this will dry out. It'll look like the skin of your compost pile. The skin of your compost pile is this. So you just stretch this out over a whole bed and you have chop and drop. So when I see all these gardeners, when I see market farmers flail mowing a previous crop, is it building soil? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a negative, and I'm not saying there's a negative effect, but I'm questioning how positive effect does it actually have on the soil. Now, if you need to just clear out a previous crop and get the bed ready to plant for the next crop, I totally get that. I'm not discounting that at all. I get the idea of flail mowing for that. But if we're talking about straight up soil building and is flail mowing, is chop and drop beneficial, I'm not sure. This is where I'm asking you, what do you think? When you think about this logically, are we building soil through chop and drop or are we really just kind of doing it so slow that it doesn't matter to us? Most gardeners want production now very quickly, or at least within a year or two. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Just go to the grocery store. You want the best food possible to feed yourself and your family as soon as you can. So compost is a way to do that. Now you could bring this in, or you could just use this. The great thing about this concentrated compost pile is I could potentially spread it out over my whole bed, but then that mimics chop and drop, right? Because this is actually probably a little better than the material that you end up with on the chop and drop, but we're diluting the small pile again over this whole bed. Where if we just take this pile here and we do just spread it out, maybe we can take it from 1 30th our 30th of our bed to let's say a 5 30ths or 1 6th of our bed. Like we can spread this out a little ways this way. And then we grow another cover crop and we do it again next time here. So we're adding a thicker layer of compost onto the top of the bed. That'll slow down the volatilization, the breakdown of this compost because in hot, humid areas, like compost is gonna wanna break down in the soil and go up into the sky very quickly. So when you add a little bit via this chop and drop, depending on your climate. I'm in an arid climate, so a lot of stuff desiccates, it dries out. I take a weed, I cut it, I throw it on the soil, I walk away, it just kind of dries out and eventually it blows away. 
it's not, I can tell you it's not ending up in the soil at least not a very significant part. Now, if you're in the tropics, maybe it's a different soil story. If you're in Florida or Tennessee, maybe it's a different story. But the hotter, the more humid your climate is, the more your soils are gonna be pumping, the more activity that you're gonna have in theory. So with just thin layers of compost via chop and drop, is it helping? The downside of this too, of chop and drop is like, this takes a long time, even if you're chopping, dropping at a month. Now, yes, you're getting all the below ground benefits, soil exudates, roots going into the soil. That's all great. You're also getting that here. So if we just look at the top, well, after a month, you'll chop this. Now you got to plant the next crop into it, which if you're leaving whole stalks, you're not gonna do that with a cedar, even the double disc. You're gonna to have to hand transplant or broadcast seed. It's gonna be a challenge. So you now have a covered bed to deal with. I would argue that a better way to handle a garden bed and build soil than chop and drop is just use mulch. That's what this is. You're, you're mulching the bed and then you're growing another cover crop, but you can't eat this cover crop. So why don't you just take chop and drop out of the process? If you're okay bringing organic matter on, grow your veg and just mulch it with straw. Mulch it with wood chips, mulch it with something else. That is what the chop and drop is doing. By just bringing in your own mulch, you are now keeping the bed covered, you're building soil slowly as that mulch breaks down, yet you have an edible crop up here potentially 100% of the time, 365 days a year. If you're chopping and dropping, when the biomass is growing, there's no edible. So you're taking time out of production to slowly build soil. Is that worth it? On a large scale, like a thousand acres, this is your only choice. I get that. That makes sense. On a 400 square foot garden, does this make sense? I don't think it does. Now, if you're die hard against bringing material into your property, or you're in this apocalyptic scenario where you can't harvest mulch from somewhere else, okay, then we do what we can. But in an apocalyptic scenario, you're not chopping, dropping anyway. You're growing food because you need to survive before the zombies eat you. So, should you chop and drop on a small scale? I don't know, I don't, I don't think you should. If we just kind of compare these in terms of method, what's actually happening, much easier to chop and drop than it is to compost because I have to chop, drop, harvest it, like pick it up, move it, compost it, and then move it back. There's a lot more work in picking all that up than there is as simply mowing it down, leaving it, and walking away. So from a work standpoint, this is easier than this, but not everything is equal. You're doing less work, but I think you're getting a lot less results here than here. So these are some of my thoughts on chop and drop. What do you think? Does this make sense? Do you see more benefits in chop and drop that maybe I'm missing? Is there something here that we could do different to make chop and drop better? I am slowly moving my mindset away from chop and drop, away from mow down to a more perennial biomass growing where something's always growing in the soil. How can we do that and build soil at the same time? Can you mix cover crops and productive crops? Now maybe that's where chop and drop comes back in. You have, let's say, one bed width, this is our bed width, and we have a cover crop growing over here with our production growing here. Then we chop this down, we plant our veg over here, transplant our veg into the chop, and then we direct seed our cover crop where the veg was, because this is gonna be kind of a cleaner bed than over here. And we use some of this to mulch this, and we keep mulching back and forth. That's kind of where I'm going in this hybrid approach. But straight up chop and drop, I don't get the point of it. I think if you're gonna wanna really build soils fast, 
you need to grow compost crops, you need to compost them properly somewhere else and then reintroduce that compost back into the bed versus straight up chop and dropping. These are my thoughts. A lot of people have commented on this. To close this out, please leave me your thoughts on what you think about chop and drop in the garden. Does this make sense? Does it not make sense? What am I missing? Let me know what you think after watching this in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.